They say that apple cider vinegar is just a fad, but what if it holds a health benefit that no one's talking about? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this video, we're going to hear from Dr. Kim. I've not reviewed his videos before, I don't think. And it's a pretty good evidence-based uh, review of this. I think as an internist, he has a certain view, like me as an internal medicine specialist. And be sure to wait till the end till you hear my final thoughts. So back when I was in medical school, I thought apple cider vinegar was just this woo-woo treatment that didn't have any scientific basis. But then I've heard so many of my patients swear by it. And then the internet says things like it can burn fat and it can reverse your diabetes and even fight infections. And some even say it can extend your life. So is apple cider vinegar this miracle cure or is it just a fad? Well, in this video, I want to break down exactly what the latest evidence says about apple cider vinegar. And I want to go over proven benefits and the myths and real risk you need to watch out for. Well, always consider the source of information when you're consuming information on the internet or even from your friends. And the internal medicine background, I think, is what gives Dr. Kim here the really sound ability to look at different kinds of studies looked at and, and puts them into sort of a hierarchy as he goes through it. I heard about apple cider vinegar. I haven't prescribed it for my patients yet. We didn't use apple cider vinegar in our studies of low carb diets through the years. And so I'm always looking for a study that adds the apple cider vinegar or whatever treatment it is to a low carb or keto kind of dietary approach. So I'm always listening for that. Let's see what he found. So by the end of the video, you'll know whether this is something you need to add to your routine or throw in the trash. So first things first, what is apple cider vinegar? Well, it's not some exotic supplement. It's literally just fermented apple juice. You crush apples and you add yeast and the yeast eats the sugar and turns it into alcohol. Now, this is where something special happens because bacteria then turn that alcohol into acetic acid. And acetic acid is the star of the show. It's what gives vinegar that sharp smell and and that sour taste. And acetic acid is what gives us the therapeutic biological effects that we're going to talk about. And acetic acid, when measured on the pH scale, which is just a scale that measures how acidic something is, it's about two to three. And to put that in perspective, water is neutral at seven and battery acid is all the way down at one. So apple cider vinegar sits right in that be careful acidic zone. And that's going to matter later when we talk about precautions with apple cider vinegar, especially when it comes to your teeth and your reflux and just overall safety. Well, pausing on that, I would have liked if he put in the information that your stomach does have a low pH. And so two to three, something like that. And if you take medication that lowers the stomach acidity, basically raises the pH. So if you're on a proton pump inhibitor or you're taking an antacids all day long for some reason, then you're not going to be having that same stomach acid. And stomach acid does lots of things. You you want to be able to kill the bacteria and, and other things that come in through the food. You want to be able to digest the food appropriately and help with enzymes with digestion. So you want to have stomach acid. And so it kind of is that face validity thing, meaning it, it makes sense to add something that would be acidic to the stomach, which is already acidic. I'd like to give a big thank you to our friends at Element for sponsoring today's video. Element offers a fantastic science-backed mix of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, essential electrolytes for anyone on a keto diet. In particular, their raw, unflavored version, which comes in the blue, teal-colored package, is a great choice. This specific version contains no stevia, no sugar, or any additives, just the three vital electrolytes your body needs, already perfectly measured for you. It's an excellent addition to a keto diet, and more importantly, it tastes great. As you may know, electrolytes play a crucial role, especially for those following a keto or carnivore lifestyle. Get a free eight count sample pack of Element's most popular drink mix flavors with any purchase. 
It's a perfect way to test it out and even share Element with a friend. Get yours now at drinkelementtcom slash Eric Westman. This special offer is only available through my link, drinkelementtcom slash Eric Westman. You'll also find it in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. So let's start with the strongest evidence that we have for apple cider vinegar, and that is blood sugar control. This is actually where apple cider vinegar shines. And there are several randomized control trials like these that show that apple cider vinegar does have therapeutic effect on glucose control, especially in people with type 2 diabetes or obesity. In fact, there's a relatively recent meta-analysis of 25 clinical trials that comprised over 1,300 participants found that apple cider vinegar consumption could significantly improve fasting blood glucose levels and and hemoglobin A1C and triglycerides. So I, I wish you would use the language, the significant, meaning it was it statistically significant or clinically significant or both. Here in this abstract, the FBG means fasting blood glucose and a blood glucose going down 20 milligrams per deciliter is, is good. It's not great, but it's good. An A1C reduction of 0.9 is good. It's not great, but it's good. The context of these, though, are studies where people are eating carbohydrates. So if you want to add apple cider vinegar to a diet that has carbohydrates, you're going to see a little bit of beneficial effect. I don't know of any study that added apple cider vinegar to a low-carb diet kind of program, keto diet, it may be that it's not necessary because you're reducing. It may be that it's not necessary. It's my hunch that it won't be necessary because you're already lowering the contribution to raise the blood glucose, which is the carbohydrates. With the effects being especially pronounced in folks with diabetes. So why does it work? Well, the key ingredient in apple cider vinegar, the acetic acid, think of it like a mild brake pedal on your digestion. Acetic acid slows down the enzyme in your gut that normally breaks down starches into sugar. So that means instead of a huge blood glucose spike after a meal, the rise in your blood glucose is smaller and slower. And then on a cellular level, acetic acid does a couple of interesting things. One, it makes your muscles more sensitive to insulin. So imagine your muscle cells as doors with locks and insulin is your key. In diabetes, the lock gets rusty and it doesn't turn so easily. So this is where acetic acid can oil that lock a little so insulin can open the door and let more glucose into their muscle cells. And then there's another effect that happens, but this time it's happening in your liver. Normally your liver can pump out extra glucose when it thinks you need it. But with insulin resistance, the liver sometimes overshoots and it adds even more unnecessary sugar into the blood. So apple cider vinegar, and actually a lot of vinegars do this, it can reduce the glucose output. So your fasting blood sugar can come down over time. And here's a concrete example of this. Let's say two people eat a bagel. Without vinegar, blood sugar might shoot up pretty quickly from 90 to let's say 180. But with vinegar before the meal, the peak might be lower at 140 instead. So it's not curing diabetes, but it's lowering the stress on the system. Well, and, and my focus there was that they were eating carbohydrates. So if you are eating carbohydrates, the apple cider vinegar might lower that or blunt the response of blood glucose after eating the carbohydrates. And then there's another fascinating process. Acetic acid can activate an enzyme in your muscles called AMPK, which acts as your body's fuel gauge. And when it turns on, cells shift towards burning fat and using glucose more efficiently. Exercise does this too. So in a way, acetic acid mimics that metabolic effect that you may get from exercise. And it acts on the same AMPK pathway as some diabetes medications like metformin. Now, what about weight? Weight loss. Well, there's one decent study out of Japan back in 2009 that was a double blind randomized control trial that showed that 12 weeks of daily vinegar intake, anywhere from 750 to 1500 milligrams of acetic acid, led to a small but a statistically significant reductions in your body weight and fat mass compared to placebo. I think it was about two pounds in the span of three months. But recent systematic reviews and meta analyses concluded that the overall current evidence is insufficient 
physician to recommend apple cider vinegar or acetic acid for weight loss, mainly due to lack of long-term and high-quality data. So yes, there may be some effect when it comes to weight loss, but it's not a big one. It's more of a nudge. Okay, but what about fighting infections? Does apple cider vinegar have antimicrobial properties? Well, people have been using vinegar as a disinfectant or as a food preservative for thousands of years. In fact, Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, reportedly prescribed vinegar for colds and wounds. And we have in vitro and animal studies that show that apple cider vinegar and acetic acid possess antimicrobial activity against many different pathogens and against bacteria like E. coli and Staph aureus, including MRSA and Pseudomonas and even fungal infections like Candida. So lots of laboratory data, but there's no high quality clinical trials in humans to say that acetic acid can actually help with infections. Yeah, I like the ability of Dr. Kim to put in that uh, where is the study coming from? And one thought I have is at this point is I wonder if he sees patients or the, so far this has just been a kind of clinical literature review. And you and I know if you've been following my channel for a while that we can learn a lot from being in the clinic and actually talking to people and seeing whether things work. In fact, let me know if you've used apple cider vinegar in the comments in addition to low carb or keto and what kind of results that you had. Or, or didn't have. I also see a lot of claims on social media about longevity and anti-aging benefits, but the existing evidence is limited to animal studies and in vitro experiments. So for example, some studies in aging rats and mice suggest that acetic acid may modulate pathways related to muscle atrophy and mitochondrial function. And there's studies to look into gut microbiome derived acetic acid and how it can improve certain aging related parameters in animal models. And there's even other animal studies that have shown antioxidant and neuroprotective effects of apple cider vinegar, but none of these findings have been confirmed in actual human clinical trials. So unfortunately, there's currently no good human evidence or any strong data to support any of those longevity claims just yet. Well, that's important to recognize that limitation. Metformin, which has a similar mechanism that as apple cider vinegar has been touted as an anti-aging sort of drug, and but so does limiting or reducing carbohydrates it has that sort of these all have similar effects okay let's talk about safety because this is the part that most people ignore and the biggest concern here is regarding your teeth as it erodes enamel over time especially if you're sipping vinegar undiluted so if you want to add apple cider vinegar to your regimen here's how to do it safely do not take more than one tablespoon per day or no more than 15 milliliters and you always want to dilute it in a big glass of water of at least eight or ten ounces of water and this is the dose that was most consistently studied in clinical trials and the best time to consume apple cider vinegar is before a meal especially a meal that's heavy in carbs or starches as that's what's going to help you to blunt that glucose spike and always use a straw to drink it to protect the enamel of your teeth and most people tolerate these doses pretty well but it can sometimes cause an upset stomach or an irritation in your esophagus or your stomach especially if you're suffering from gastroesophageal reflux yeah so in my practice, I've seen people use apple cider vinegar, and one person actually was so appetite suppressed from the apple cider vinegar, and I think there was a study about that that he didn't mention, but it was so strong that this patient that I saw didn't eat much at all. And, and so the thinking was, if you're not hungry, you don't eat, and you're using apple cider vinegar, so you're not hungry, and he basically didn't eat really anything. And that's not a great idea. We see that sometimes even on the GLP-1s, the shots, some people are so appetite suppressed, they don't eat anything. And that's not a safe use of these kinds of medicines, or it's not a safe weight loss approach. You got to have some protein while you're losing weight, we believe. And the other time I, I've seen apple cider vinegar, and if someone tells me they have nausea or, or stomach upset after they start the program that I teach, I suspect several things. Because typically when you cut carbs out and when you do a keto diet, the, the gut fixes itself. The hunger goes away, the nausea, there is no nausea, that sort of thing. So if someone has nausea after starting a keto diet, I worry about 
them still being on metformin, a pill that can cause nausea. I worry about someone using apple cider vinegar or, or medium chain triglyceride oil or other type of like putting butter in the coffee. These things can cause nausea. Typically a keto diet when taught appropriately and correctly with real foods, you're not going to get nausea at when you start it. It should fix it. But the good news is, for the most part, there were no serious adverse effects that have been reported in the literature when apple cider vinegar is used at those doses. But we also don't have any long-term safety data beyond 12 weeks, so we always have to keep that in the back of our minds. And as always, please talk to your doctor before you add this to your regimen to make sure it's safe in your particular situation. So based on the current state of evidence, apple cider vinegar is not a miracle by any means, but it is cheap and it seems to be fairly safe if dosed appropriately especially in the short term. And when it comes to my own patients, the only setting I recommend apple cider vinegar is if they have issues with insulin resistance like diabetes or prediabetes. But looking at the current state of evidence, it's pretty hard to recommend it for anything else at this point. Well, I don't know where he practices, but he does see patients. And I think that was a pretty good literature review of the use of apple cider vinegar, meaning uh, I'm not convinced that it's well, I know it's not necessary if you're going to do a keto or low carb diet. And if it does give incremental benefit, I don't know how much incremental benefit that would be. It just hasn't been in that kind of research study as of yet. So I like the video in general when he was talking about that with the effects, he would back it up with a paper right there and it was mostly human studies, but when they weren't human studies, he acknowledged that. So well done, Dr. Kim. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining our YouTube membership for early access and exclusive live Q and A's with me. Just click the join button below or support us with a PayPal in the description.